Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for January 29th, 2024. I'm teaching a series this year. I'm setting the tone this year, and I'm going to be teaching pretty much all year long on being laser focused on the fixed purpose that God has established for us from the foundations of the world. So uh, listen, this message today is going to flow in that vein. The title of the message is From Fear to Faith, The Role of Focus. Put in the chat, I transition from fear to faith. I'm not going to live by fear. No, I'm going to live by faith. And where where faith is, there's no fear. Where fear is, there's no faith. But I'm going to transition from fear to faith, and I'm going to be locked in and focused on what God has called me to do. Before uh, we really get deep into the word, let me just say this. Yesterday, the Lord allowed me to preach a message entitled, Do Not Lose Your Focus. So for those of you that get uh, today's word, the email version, you already have the email in your inbox with a link to that message. If you don't, go to, first of all, you should subscribe. But second of all, just go to youtube.com as first forward slash Rick Pena, or just search for Rick Pena on YouTube. Go to my my page, it's called The Grace Life, and you're going to see a message there. Do not lose your focus. You should watch that message. It's going to be a tremendous blessing to you. Now, I want you to open up your heart and get ready to receive so that fear will have no power over you. All right. Fear has no power over me. Uh, Perfected love casts out all fear. I rest in God's love. And let me just say this before I get into the message. It was great seeing some of you. Some of you showed up at Faith Outreach Church of Augusta yesterday, and I got to see you, and I got to hug you, and I got to take pictures with you. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being such a blessing to me. I love you guys. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. So the foundational scripture for, for today or for this year, is Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 25 from the Passion Translation. This is what the Bible says. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. This is how you go from fear to faith. You got to get refocused. You got to get recalibrated. You got to ignore life's distractions. And so we've also been looking at Matthew chapter 14. Let me read this uh, for you again uh, today. Short, shortly before dawn, Uh, Jesus went out to meet his disciples on the lake. It was the fourth watch of the night between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. When the disciples saw him, they thought that they saw a ghost. They they were terrified. Um, I shared yesterday that if if you ever been up at that time, so let me just be clear about the whole, you know, fourth watch of the night. So the first watch of the night is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second watch of the night is 9 p.m. to midnight. Third watch of the night is midnight to 3 a.m. Fourth watch of the night is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And so I shared yesterday that, like, if you ever pull CQ or guard duty in the the military and you're sitting there all night and, you know, you're like from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., you start hallucinating. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my God, that's like Dr. Joel Gregory said, that's the law of human existence. Like, you're like, whoa, what am I seeing? And so it was at it was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. The disciples had been battling wind and waves all night. They were physically tired. They were exhausted. They were drained. And then they see something that they thought was a ghost, and they were terrified. They cried out in fear. But then Jesus said to them, no, 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 do not be afraid. Fear not. Take courage. It is I. And then Peter said, well, Lord, if that's you, then bid me to come out on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter started walking on the water, which he was walking on the word. And then he took a few steps, and then uh, he shifted his attention. He lost his focus. He started looking at the wind and the waves, and he sank. He said, Lord, save me. Jesus picked him up out of the water. And then Jesus said, where's your faith, man? He said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? But what does this mean for you today? I told you that this won't be a very long message. I only have two main points to share with you this morning, and we're really going to be dealing with fear and overcoming fear and transitioning from fear to faith. Put in the chat, fear has no power over me. You ready? Two points. Here's number one. When God is present, you have nothing to fear. Put in the chat, I am aware of God's presence. God is always present, but we're not always aware of God's presence. So when I'm aware of God's presence, then I have nothing to fear. 
don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. It's not just a phrase that Jesus used over and over and over again. Fear not. It's not just a phrase that he, he used on a routine basis. No, it was a command. It was a command. Jesus was saying, listen, I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you. Faith moves God. Fear moves Satan. The kingdom of God functions on faith. The kingdom of Satan functions on fear. He's like, no, do not fear. I'm commanding you not to fear. Right. And it's backed by the fact that he was present. Jesus said, no, it is I. I am here. Do not be afraid. If I'm here, you should not be afraid. If I'm present, Fear should not be present. If I'm present, love is present. And if love is present, fear should not be present. I'm here. The presence of God is what guarantees us uh, the to be able to cast out and overcome all fear. In this situation, overcoming fear was not about removing the wind, removing the waves. See, a lot of times people think that for us to overcome fear, God has to take away the things that's causing the fear. No, God didn't take away the wind. God didn't take away the waves. God doesn't have to take away anything. It's not about it's not about the absence. Put in the chat. Fear is not about the absence of anything. It's not about God having to remove something. It's not about the absence of anything. It's about the presence of God. And so once once I know that that overcoming fear is not about the absence of the things that were causing the fear, it's about the presence of God. Once God is present, then I have nothing to fear. It, I, say this, say, I know God is present. When you know that God is with you in a hotel room, in a hospital room, in a, in a courtroom, wherever you are, God is with you and you have nothing to fear. Why? Because God is present. Once you know that God is present, then fear has no power over you. I know that fear is typical to the human experience, Fear is typical to, to, to your humanity. But once God is inserted into the picture, I want you to, to know that you have nothing to fear because God brings with him a peace that is literally out of this world. <laughs> God's peace is from another world. God's peace is from heaven. So God is bringing you a peace that comes from heaven. Matter of fact, Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thy will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee. If your focus is on God, is your focus is on the fact that God is on me and in me and with me and for me, if if I'm considering that, if I'm meditating on God's presence, then I have nothing to fear. Put in the chat, I have nothing to fear. The disciples were terrified. They thought they saw a ghost. They needed to hear from Jesus. Jesus said, I am here. And if I'm here, fear doesn't need to be here. He said, fear not. We can overcome, you and I can overcome the storms of our lives once we know God is present. Once you know, listen, you could be in a, in a, in a uh, hospital room. You could be dealing with a terrible situation. The doctors can tell you that they're practicing medicine and, and they've done all they know how to do. And you're like, oh my God, you say to your wife or husband, what are we going to do? And, and you don't know what you're going to do. And you look up and not down and you look forward and not backward and you pray out and you cry out to God and the presence of God fills the room. Once the presence of God fills the room and you feel that God is present, guess what happens? Perfected love casts out all fear. Once God is present, then fear cannot be present. Once you, once you know that and God says, hey, I got this, it's going to be okay. If God gives you a word, then the fear has to go. In 1 John 4 and 18 says, God is love. And where God's love is, there is no fear because God's perfect fear takes away, I mean, God's perfect love takes away all fear. God's perfect love takes away all fear. God is love. And where he is, God's perfect love takes away all fear. If God is present and you know he's present and you acknowledge his presence, okay, let's say that there's a young marriage right? We just prayed for a couple that's about to get married. There's a young marriage that's struggling and they're talking about divorce and they're afraid that now, oh, what are we going to do with us? What are we going to do with the kids? What are we going to, and they're, they're going through all of this. Well, they're not acknowledging God's presence because if they acknowledge God's presence then God's presence would assure them that, that he can empower them to overcome whatever they're dealing with, whatever their issues are. And then once God's presence comes in, and heals the marriage, God's presence casts out all fear. Wherever the, the presence of the Lord is, it takes the fear away. Once you know that God is present, he doesn't have to remove the like the storm or the wind or the wind. God doesn't have to remove anything. It's not about 
subtracting anything. It's just about adding God into the equation. Once God is present, then listen, you can be at rest. And this can give you a peace, even help you with mental health. And this is a major challenge right now. People are struggling with mental health all over the United States and all over the world. Well, once you realize that God is present, then your mind is going to be at peace. Your soul is going to be at rest. Why? Because God's got this thing, man. I don't know how it's going to turn out. God hasn't told me yet, but I know it's going to be good. Hey, babe, we got this. Look, let's, we're going to walk it out. God is on us. God has never failed us before. He's not going to fail us now. Uh, well, what do you think is going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, God hasn't spoke to me yet, but we've prayed. We've laid out some things. We've petitioned some things. You know what we're going to do, babe? We're going to walk this thing out by faith. We're going to live day by day. We're going to open up our heart. We're going to do whatever the Holy Spirit leads us to do. We're going to believe God. We're going we're gonna to believe that God is going to open doors that no man can close. We're going to believe that God is going to close doors that no man can open. Oh, glory. I feel the presence of the Lord. Once God is present, you know what, babe? God is with us. And because God is with us, we got this thing. If you believe that God is present, fear has no power over you. If you believe that God is present, his presence, his reassuring presence, you could be in the middle of chaos and you'll be at peace. Why? Because you know that, that God is with you. God is on you. God is in you. God is for you. Say amen to that. Put in the chat, God is with me. Put in the chat, God is on me. Put in the chat, God is for me. And so when you know that, then you switch from fear to faith. You, you, you recalibrate your focus. You set your gaze. On, you, you are now locked in on the purpose that you believe that God has for this particular season. You, you, are, you acknowledge God's presence. And you know that fear has no power over you. So you get to transition from fear over back into faith. And once you're back into faith, you have the peace of God. And once you have the peace of God, now you can enter into God's rest. And now you're going to sleep and you're going to get sweet sleep. And you know that God is working while you're sleeping. And there's no there's no need for both of us to stay up. God God never slumbers nor sleeps. And so God is going to work this thing out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to sleep. And I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to say yesterday ended last night. And it's going to be a brand new day, brand new mercy, brand new grace. And God will lead me tomorrow concerning what to do tomorrow. And, and so we're not going to sit up. It is vain, the Bible says to sit up late at, late, late at night, eating the bread of sorrow, worrying and, and in fear and complaining and, and, uh, and fret and allowing the devil to rob you of your peace. No, no, that's vain. Don't do that. Just go to sleep and wake up the next day. Yesterday ended last night. Today's a brand new day. Lord, you know, I'm ready for whatever you have. I know that you're with me. I know it's going to work out for my good. I, I have nothing to fear. Put in the chat, I have nothing to to fear. Say amen to that. Glory to God. I wish I could see the chat. All right. I only have two points for you this morning. Here's my second point. Uh, number two, how focus will help fuel your faith. Put in the chat, my focus helps to fuel my faith. Peter, he went out there on the water. And this is a great example of how people lose their focus or how people can, can actually have focus. When he got out of the boat initially, he was locked in on what Jesus said. Jesus said, come. And so when he was locked in on, on that word, come, he was walking on the water. He was literally walking on the word. He was, he was doing the unthinkable. He was doing the unimaginable. He was doing the impossible. Why? Because his, he was focused on the word. Put in the chat, I will be focused on the word. God is going to give me a word and God gives me a word for the season, for 2024, for, for parts of 2024, for my marriage, for my children, uh, for my business, for my career. And I'm going to stand on that word. I'm going to believe that word. I'm going to walk this thing out. In this world, distractions are everywhere. Proverbs 4 and 25 is telling me I got to set my gaze. I got to be fixed and focused and I got to ignore life's distractions. There will be distractions. Distractions are going to be everywhere, but I'm going to be focused. I'm not going to lose my focus. I'm not going to shift my attention. I'm not going to look at the things that I'm not supposed to be looked at. Like a laser beam, I'm, I'm going to be locked in on the word of God. Put in the chat, I'm locked in on the word of God, but I am steadfast. I am unmovable. I am pinpointing. I am unwavering. I'm going to be locked in on what God said, and I'm not going to be moved for, for, from it, neither to the left nor to the right. Our faith is strong when we are meditating on the promise of God, and we do not allow anything to distract us or to dissuade us. And it's not like the distractions are not there. Distractions are everywhere, but it's about blocking out the background noise. It's about tuning in to God's frequency. 
It's about ignoring life's distractions. Put in the chat, I will block out the background noise. I'm going to tune out everything but God. I'm going to be locked into what God told me. I'm going to believe God. I, listen, uh, uh, when we're working through some stuff, oh man, how is this going to happen? Well, we're just going to have to believe God. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to live every day. You know, I'm believing God for something with my children. It hasn't happened yet. I can't be moved by what I see. And, you know, I'm going to continue to pray. I know God loves me. I know God has a plan for my children. And so I know this thing has to work out. And so I'm just going to continue to believe God. I'm going to continue to pray. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be laser focused. I'm going to tune out and block out all distractions. I know God has a plan for my career. I know God has a plan for my marriage. I know God has a plan for my business. I know God has a plan for my body. <laughs> and the, doc the doctors are saying one thing, but I'm believing God for something else. I'm going to block out all the background noise. I'm going to tune in like a laser on what God said. I'm going to meditate and medicate on God's word. How often? Day and night. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be fixed and focused. And so focus is not just about what we see. Uh, uh, it's, it's about consciously ignoring anything that will distract you. It's about laser. There are going to be distractions. God is not going to take the distractions away. God, is, God has never said that he was supposed to, oh, make this stuff easy for us. No, there are going to be distractions all around us that can derail us from our destiny. But, but, but to live by faith, we got to deliberately turn away from the distractions, tune those things out, and be locked into God. Losing your focus can, can throw you off track. If you lose, put in the chat, if you lose your focus, you can lose your way. Listen, you don't want to lose your way and you don't want to lose your focus. You want to be locked in. You want to have spiritual vision. You want to be fixed and focused on him. Every step of your faith journey requires an unwavering focus on God. While Peter was locked in on Jesus, while Peter was locked in on the word of God, he was walking on water. But once he lost his focus, he lost his way. He began to sink. So as you're walking with God and God is walking with you and you're attempting to live the life of faith, then your focus is like, like your focus will keep you locked into God's spiritual GPS. You will know where to go. You will know what to do. You will know what to say. Why? Because you're focused. So once again, I preached a message yesterday entitled, Do Not Lose Your Focus. If you haven't watched that message, go to youtube.com forward slash Rick Pena and watch that message. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice. Listen, this is important. You're going to seal the deal by declaring the word of the Lord over your own life. Prophesy over yourself. Say, Father, I live with a laser focus on your fixed purpose for my life this year. In your presence, fear has no power over me. I am secure in your arms. I embrace your command to not be afraid. <laughs> your presence cast out all fear. Your perfect love removes every trace of fear from my heart. I choose to focus on your promises. I choose to doubt my doubts. I choose to cast those things away. I choose to keep my eyes fixed on you. Even in the middle of storms, in a world full of distractions, I commit, Father, to live laser focused and anchored in your word. Your presence and your power helps me to transition from fear to faith. So as I walk with you, my path is clear, my purpose is firm, and in every step I take, I'm reminded of your love. Living this way, I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name, Amen. Now, this is today's word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another one, and tomorrow, I'm going to be home, and so I'm excited. But yeah, tomorrow, I'm going to have another one. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing day. Uh, I'm about to go get on this plane, and so I pray for you. I love you. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. Watch that message. That message will be a blessing to you. Do me a favor. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you, and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Greater is coming for you. Have a blessed day. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart 
to set up a coaching and mentorship program. And Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material. And there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.